Look at that. All right, I want to introduce you to a bone-on pork loin from Cheshire Pork. And this stuff's unreal, right? Uh, you want to celebrate it. You don't want to coat it with rich sauces. Um, this is 40 years of genetics laid down uh, from generation to generation of beautiful marbled pork. That fat right there is what we want to celebrate. Don't you dare trim that off, okay? Uh, a lot of people worked hard for that. So what I want to do with this, we could do a pork prime rib. In fact, we've got that video out there, so check that out. But what I want to do is a double chop tomahawk. Double chop tomahawk? Double chop tomahawk. All right, let's get in the action. Okay. First thing we're going to do is locate the bones. One, two. That was easy. And now we're going to cut in between the ribs and trace all the way down. And I can tell I'm starting to get into the loin now. I don't want to cut a wedge, so we want to make sure we're going to stand up. I'm going to, I'm going to stand this away from me so you can see what's going on here. And I'm gunning for right about there. And I'm going to flip it around so you can see. Again, I'm cutting straight down here to get this nice, even cut. And sometimes I like to hold both pieces like that. Slice through. Get some of that nice fat. And what we're left with is just this gorgeous music note. Um, unbelievable meat here nice bit of rib meat so let's get we could french this all up but i kind of want to eat it so uh, let's leave it at this and go ahead and season it up again we are celebrating the delicious pork here um, so i'm going to go with something heavy on the salt heavy on the pepper uh, the lane's barbecue scorpion combo and just go ahead don't forget to get the ribs don't forget to get that fat cap and of course the other side. Now when we're doing this, we could do it indirect, but I wanna go direct uh, and I wanna do two zone cooking without using the deflector shield. So I'm gonna come around and show you what I mean. Notice how I've got an even bed of coals and that is a hot bed of coals. We're at about 550 right now. When we close the dome, we'll drop it down to 450, but I'm gonna bank all of these coals to one side so I can get a nice sear on all sides and then graduate it over to the semi indirect side. All right, place your other grill grate in. And if we wanted to, we could use one half moon deflector shield on this and really have two separate heat zones, but I'm good with it. We're gonna lay our fat cap side down first to begin the rendering process. I'm gonna shut the dome and in about five minutes, we're gonna take a look and see what we've got and sear one of the other sides. Smells terrific already. Let's see if we're getting some good caramelization there. Oh yeah, all right. Let's flip this way so you can see that nice caramelization. Oh yeah. And that's gonna start the rendering process for all that gorgeous, gorgeous fat, which is part of the reason we're using this cut to begin with. Another five minutes. All right. Let's flip to side number three. Oh, look at that. All that intermuscular fat that's in there, the marbling, comes from these farmers 40 years ago paying attention to, to selective breeding. That's crazy. I think it's a mix between a Duroc and a Berkshire. And this is the number one selling pork on the Tokyo market. So just like beef, uh, they're all into that intermuscular fat and marbling and quality. And this little old town in North Carolina, Seven Springs, North Carolina, is pumping out the most delicious pork on earth. I freaking love it. Five more minutes. Here we go. Every time I open this lid, it's like opening a Christmas present. It's so exciting. Now, this is the only side that hasn't hit the heat, okay? So when we flip this for the fourth time, I'm gonna flip that face down on the indirect side. Here we go. Good caramelization all around. We're gonna leave this double chop tomahawk to sit just like this for a couple minutes. And then the next flip's a bit odd. We go from 
being like this to going like that. All right, so we want to cook this thing evenly, and we're going to take it to an internal temperature of about 140, 145. I'm going to get that crow. Uh, so we'll take it to about 100, 145, and let it raise up a little bit. We don't need to cook pork to 155 and then pull it, or it's going to be dry. Even with all the benefits of using Cheshire pork with its marbling, if you overcook it, you overcook it. Um, so if you take this to 140, take it off, let it rest as we will, it's going to be music to your palate. That makes sense. Let's go for that flip we were talking about, just so that this side gets an even even cook. Starting to get some bubbling and rendering going on on that rib meat. We'll take a temperature here in a couple minutes. I bet we're at about a hundred and about we're about 105. Let's take a temperature right now and see how close I am. On camera. No editing Nathan. No editing. What did I say? 105? Yeah you said 105. Alright. Ah oh, not even close. 11 degrees off. Oh well, it's pretty close. I don't use thermometers. I don't know, you know, but <laughs> but I do. But it does bring up a valid point and talk about this. Every time you do stick something with a thermometer, make sure you're squeezing it first and building context. Now these larger meats are going to feel a little bit firmer, maybe from anywhere to five to eleven degrees. <laughs> <laughs> Just like. <that. laughs> All right, team, it's been roughly 45 minutes. We've continued to turn as we saw fit for the caramelization. We've been running at about 425 degrees. Let's take a look at where we're at. I like it. I love it. I love it. And I love it. So let's pull this baby. And now for the most difficult thing in all of culinary, <laughs> letting it rest. And, and this is gonna be a feat because if I could handle the heat right now, I would just pick this thing up caveman style and go for it. I wanna make sure that you're seeing the same thing I'm seeing. Look at, look at that, look at that fat cap. This is just stunning. I am so glad that these two brothers in, in it just outside of Goldsboro, North Carolina, went the opposite direction of the American Pork Council 40 years ago and didn't. That was close. And didn't make pork the other white meat. They didn't go lean. They stayed the course on these heritage breeds for the fat content. I am so thankful. We gotta let this baby rest for about 10 minutes and then we're gonna slice it to it. Let's go ahead and we're gonna trace this bone with the knife all the way down and release that loin. I can just tell by the way it's cut and that is freaking juicy. Oh my gosh. Just glides right through. I can tell I'm hitting that fat cap that we love so much. I mean, it's, it's really quite beautiful. Great crust, super tender in the center. This is a fun part too. There's a lot of different muscles running different places. A lot of fat content in there. Oh, that's gonna be my bite right there. That's... Yep, that's money in the bank. And you know, as far as these go, I'm gonna put a little seasoning right on this bit here. I'm gonna pop that right back on the grill and that's gonna be a little chef snack right there. So as we're serving this, you know, to the rest of the family and having fun, this part right here has got to be my favorite. All day long, double pork chopped tomahawk. I dig it. The only thing would be better, triple, but it wouldn't rhyme as well. Folks, any questions, comments, or concerns, leave me a comment down in the comment section below. I respond to all the comments. I definitely read all the comments. I really appreciate you guys spending the time with us today. Um, give Cheshire Pork a look. They got some amazing pork products. Uh, if you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed cooking it for you, don't forget to subscribe, like, and like I said, do leave that comment. 
from my backyard to yours. Cheers and happy growing.